Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Lens, and I've been live streaming on YouTube ever since 2021. So you're welcome to join our live streams. I do live trade callouts. I pass prop from challenges right in front of you as well. So you're welcome to join the stream. Now today I'm going to give you a rundown of the TraderVate platform. Uh, that way you feel nice and comfortable to use it with your prop firm and use it for your personal use. Okay, I'm going to be showing you how to take a buy or sell, how to customize your chart, set it up, and also how to use that trade copier. So all the basics you need. So I'm going to click access a simulation because I'm going to be logging into the take profit trader accounts that I have. Um, as you can see at the top, we do have the balance. I just started a 50K challenge on stream two days ago. So we've been doing that. We're almost there. We only have like a thousand left. But anyway, this is where you do see the balance and how much you have over here is going to be the name of the account. If I click here, you're going to see I do have two accounts. Again, these are evaluations that I just bought. We're doing them together on stream. Um, and then this right here is going to be the name of the trade copier. Now we're going to come back to this to show you how to set that up and all that good stuff. But let's continue our tour. We come over here, we're going to have our buy market button and our sell market button. These two buttons I do use primarily to take a buy or a sell. Okay. Right here is going to be where you enter the amount of contracts. Right now it says 10 and that's because I am copy trading to two accounts. So it is important to know that when you do copy trade, you need to put the total number of contracts uh, for all the accounts combined. So for an example, I want to enter the market with a five contract on each account. So five and five is 10. So that's why it says 10. So whatever number you put there, you have to divide it up. Now, um, this exit all button is typically what I click to close my trade. So whenever I want to close my trade, I click that exit button. Boom. It closes it on all the accounts. Even if you're copy trading, it'll close them all. ATM right here is how you're going to be setting up the brackets. If you want it preset to a take profit or a stop loss preset, um, you can do that. Now, as far as copy trading, I have not found a way to have that on while copy trading. Whenever I turn this on and I'm copy trading, it says like error. So as far to my knowledge, feel free to let me know in the comments. But as far as I know, you're not allowed to have the brackets on when you're copy trading, unfortunately. So no presets here. So that's why it says off. Um, but you are welcome to customize it and Set it if you're just trading one account and say, hey, I want my stop loss to be 30 points or 40 points or whatever you want it to be. OK. All right. Let's get to the fun stuff. If you want to add a pair to your chart, you're going to click this right here and let's just use ES for an example. Let's say you want to add ES. You're going to notice that there are different letters. Now, I advise you to just go to Google and look up, OK, what letters represent which month, right? And those letters represent the months that the contracts expire. So for an example, if you choose a letter that represents January, January contract expired already, you're going to have a chart when you pull it up on the one minute, you're going to see that it's all gappy and spread out. So you want to make sure you're choosing a pair where the contract is up to date. All right. So I'm actually going to do MES because I just realized I did ES as an example on stream. So that chart is already customized. So I want to do something that's not customized yet. So you're going to click it. And typically if it's your first time on trade of eight, you're probably going to walk into a chart that looks like this. Now don't panic. This is just a bar chart. You can simply, and let me just click this X. You can simply hover your mouse over here and then you're going to have your chart settings. Okay. So right here, it says bars. You're going to click that and you're going to click candlesticks. Boom back to where you are. Now, if you want to use anything else like a line chart or anything else, go ahead and do what you do. But I'm going to assume that most people are going to use the candlestick feature. OK, now, if you take a look, we do have grid lines on the chart. I prefer mine without it. You can do what you want. But if you click these chart settings right here, it says grid. You can just click that and your grid will be removed. Right. And you can click it again, click it back on. You can do what you want. OK. Now, as far as fill and orders go, if you click on this tab, it's going to say show orders. What I like to do is I click show all. I like to see where my orders are filled. I like to see where my stop loss is or my entry is right. If you want those lines to show on your chart, just click show all. Of course, it's not going to show anything right now because we're not in a trade. But if I were to enter a trade right now, you'll be able to see, OK, this is my entry point. This is this. OK. Now, next, let's go into customizing our candlesticks. You're just going to double click your candlesticks here and right here. This column right here is going to be your bullish candlesticks. 
this column in the middle is going to be your bearish candlesticks. Okay. Now it's important to know that if you want a special hex code right here, if you have a special color in mind that you want to copy and paste from maybe trading view or from Google, if you Google the hex color, the way that trader bay is coded, you can't just right click. I'm going to right click right now. See, nothing happens. You can't just right click and copy paste. You do have to use your keyboard. So you're going to have to use control V to paste. Okay. What I'm going to do is just to give you a nice example, I'm going to come over to micro NASDAQ. So when I click this here, let's say I want this hex code. I'm going to double click control C to copy. Okay. And I'm just going to click out of here. Let's come back over to our example. I'm going to double click to get the chart settings. And let's say I want to change the body of this candlestick. I'm going to double click to highlight this control V. And now I have that color. If I press save, you're going to see that the body did change. Now it looks a little funny because we didn't change the wicks or the outline. So let's go ahead and change that wick color. We're going to do control V to copy and paste that color and the outline on the body as well. And we're going to press save and look at there. We changed our chart colors and you can do the same thing with the bearish candles. If you want to change them to black, which I don't recommend because the background is black, right? You're not gonna be able to see it, but you know what I mean? You get the gist of it. You can change these colors to simply whatever you want them to be. Okay. You can change them to whatever you want them to be. Now indicators, uh, typically the chart does come preset with this SMA on it. If you don't want it, you can double click and you can click remove nice and simple, right? Now I do like to use a moving average. So let's just say you want an indicator and chart. You're going to come over here, hover your mouse in this corner and indicators pops up. And let's say you want to add the moving average. You're going to click moving average. Let's say you want to add that EMA. You can change it right here, whether you want the 20, the 50, the 200, whatever you want. You can change the color of your EMA right here as well. Click save. And there we go. Now we have an EMA up here and we have a different color for it too. Okay. And again, indicators is right here. When you click on it again, you're going to notice that you're still in the moving average menu. Don't panic. Just press this back arrow button and then you can kind of go through these settings and choose whatever indicator you'd like. Okay. And you can save your templates. Of course, this is the zoom in button and zoom out button. You can zoom out, you can zoom in. Okay. Now the way I like to use this is if I'm on the one minute, especially typically I'm on the one minute or lower time frame. If you click this zoom button, right? You can click and let go of your mouse, move your mouse around and you can highlight where you want to zoom in. So now I'm going to click again, boom. And then I can zoom in here, right? So you can use that feature that way too. That's my favorite way to use that feature. And of course I forgot to go over the time period here. You can change it to the one minute. You can change it to the one hour, whatever you need to do. Uh, let's say your chart is out of place and you're like, whoa, what happened to my candlesticks? You can bring your mouse over here to the right on top of the prices, double click, and you should be good to go. You can click and drag it back over. Okay. So those are the basics that you need indicators, um, making sure you have the candlesticks on or line chart, whatever you want to use, um, being able to change the color of the candlesticks. I've yet to figure out how to change the background. Um, but if someone knows, feel free to comment down below, um, and give me some help here. I, I don't mind the black, but so yeah, so let's come over here. We have what's called a data box. This isn't something I use, but it does give you the open high and low close and volume. And you can always click that little X up there to get out of it. And then you have your drawing tools. Now I, I personally don't like drawing on this platform. Um, so to each their own, if you like drawing on it, cool, you know, but right here we do have a line and we can draw a line. Okay. You can double click that line. You can change the color of that line. If you want, you can change the thickness of the line. You can change it to a dotted line, All right, You can do a whole bunch of things to it. You can save it and boom, you know, you can, you can customize it pretty good here. You can always double click it and remove it and the line is gone. So yeah, so we have lines. You can make a polygon, a vertical line, Fibonacci, all the things that you need are in here and shapes as well. Let's just go over to rectangles. I know a lot of people like to be able to, let's say, highlight supports. You can customize your rectangle any way you want. We got the border, which is the outline. We have the background color. Okay. And you can make it more see-through, less see-through this way. All right. I think we went through all the basics of customizing your chart um, to your liking. 
let's get into taking a buy or sell. So we did just kind of briefly talk about taking a buy and a sell right here by clicking these buttons and making sure that you do have the correct uh, sizes here. For an example, if you are copy trading and you have a bunch of accounts here and you have a one here, if you go to take a buy or sell, it's gonna have like an error message and tell you, hey, your quantity needs to be more than one because it needs to divide that number up to the amount of accounts that you're copying to. So just a heads up, but let's say you take a market sell here, right? If I take a market sell here and I enter and I want to create a stop loss for myself, let's say I want to put the stop loss above this high, I'm just going to click with my mouse and I'm going to put a buy stop. Now I can't do it now because the market is closed, but just understand for those of you who are new into futures, it's your stop loss is the opposite of what you're doing, right? So again, if you're taking a sell, your stop loss is going to be a buy stop. Now, if we're doing the opposite, if you're taking a buy, your stop loss is going to be a sell stop. Now, don't worry, don't panic. I have an example for you that we did yesterday on stream. Um, check out this sell here that we did. And you're going to see me put a entry in and manually do my stop loss. Enjoy. It's here. Chat, that NASPAC is going crazy. I hear, let's see if we can hold this. Okay, now that you saw that, let's get in to the most popular request, which is the trade copier, okay? So you're gonna come up here to your accounts and you are going to click manage groups. And at the time, all these accounts are gonna be over here, just so you know, they're all, all the accounts, let's say you buy 20 Apex accounts, whatever, you know, whatever accounts you have, with any firm or with yourself, they're going to be over here in this category. You're going to click this plus symbol and you're going to name a group and let's just call it sample, sample group. And what you're going to do is now that you have your sample group, whatever accounts are here, you're going to click and drag them over. And whatever accounts are in this row are going to be the accounts that are copied. Okay. So again, no matter how many accounts you have over here, you'll just click them and drag them if you want them under the sample. Now, what's cool about this is let's say you have 10 accounts and you want to say, okay, I want to put three accounts in one sample size. I want to put the other three in another sample size, right? If you want to split it up. So that's what's cool. You can have a bunch of different account trade copiers. Now, I'm just going to save this just so you can see, um, for an example, having different trade copiers. If I click this area, you're going to see I have my two times, which is just these two together. That's the first trade copier. And then we have the trade copier we just created, which is sample. Okay. So again, you can make different type of trade copiers with different accounts if you want. Okay. Now, if let's say you want to delete these groups, you're going to go to manage. You're going to click the down button and which group do I want to delete? I'd like to delete the sample trade copier. So I'm going to click that garbage can and it is gone and I'm going to click save. And then I'm going to click that X. Now, if I come back up here, you're going to see there's only one trade copier here and it is called two times. All right. Now let's get into some cool stuff here. If we press the add mode, uh, there's a few different things you can add here. So let's say you want to add a market analyzer. You can click and hold it with your mouse. You can place it down here. You can place it up here. You can place it to the side. Okay. Now the market's closed right now. So nothing's going to show. And if you want to get rid of it, just simply press the X. Now, the most popular thing that most people add here is typically the trade performance. So let's pull this up. Okay. And what we're going to do here is there's no data because it's going off of today. But let's just click here for more data. And instead of today, let's do yesterday since I traded yesterday on stream. You're going to see that yesterday on stream. Um, on each account, I made $767. Again, this was all live, um, totaling in $1,465 with the two accounts. So you're going to get all this, all these stats, right? Which is pretty cool. So yeah, so down here, it says positions. When you have a trade open, you're going to see your orders right here. And then down here, we do have the trade performance and you can always click it, drag it. So you want to move it over to the right. This is typically the place I like to put it while I'm trading so that I can see how much money I'm up for the day. Okay. And again, you can go through these yourself and you can add these and position them any way you like. 
you know, you can have them side by side. You can click and drag. If I want to take a look at gold and I want to see NASDAQ, now I can look at them side by side. So you can customize them anyway. You can look at them up and down like that. You can drag this over here. There we go. And you can drag this over. But yeah, I mean, what's really cool about this is you can customize it any way you want. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to write them down below in the comments. I hope I gave you a full tutorial here just to get you started, all the basics you need to get started with any prop firm or to use this by yourself. Just remember, it's going to feel uncomfortable at first because it's something fresh and new. I'd say give it about a month and I bet you're going to feel nice and comfortable with it. If you have any other questions for me, feel free to come by to the live streams. I'm live every single day. Uh, throughout the week monday through friday i do new york sessions so you are welcome to stop by if you feel like you have trouble you're having trouble or you know you need some guidance during your prop firm challenges i'm here to help you that's what i'm here for so make sure you like and subscribe for more videos and i will catch you later